Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity Shaders tutorial. In this one we're going to be covering how to make this fire effect and uh, the way I've made it is slightly different to the original which I'm going to show you in a second. Obviously like I've added some parameters that you can change so you can change how curved it is. Obviously you don't want it that much. And you can also change the colors and whatever you want to do uh, of the shader. And also the speed of the animation. You can slow it right down if you want. Obviously, you probably want it a bit more, but anyway. Um, and the person that made this original shader is uh, Andy BC here on uh, the Unity 3D subreddit. Uh, I asked him permission for permission to make a tutorial on his uh, fire shader, and he said, so long as I uh, shout him out and link to his Twitter, then that's okay. So I'll do so in the description to this video. But anyway, let's get into making it. So let's apply this new material, open it up, this new shader, sorry. And here we go. So first things first let's make it transparent and that's so that we can actually like ignore uh, above the flame the empty space where there is no flame to render um, rather than just having it black we want it to be invisible no alpha so that's done and then the main thing that makes this effect work is the Veroni uh, Veron I don't know how you pronounce it Veroni yeah Veroni Veroni Noir Veronoir someone correct me on how I pronounce that <laughs> I could look it up but anyway um, it basically gives a kind of like cell look, like biology, that kind of cell. Obviously it even has cell density on it. And if I save the uh, thing and you go look at it now, I don't know if you, you can see it down here in the preview window. Can I, my, I can bring that bigger. Um, you see it just looks like cells on a ball. Uh, this isn't what we want, but this is the start of our, um, this is the start of our shader. And in here you can change the UV, which is what we're going to be changing. You're also going to be able to change the offset, uh, the rotation of the actual things themselves. So if you set it to zero, they are perfectly lined up. Obviously, otherwise they're offset. Um, I, well, I don't know what the default was actually. Um, eight. Okay. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then the densities, you know, how many cells are in a certain amount of area. So you can increase that or decrease that. Um, and then the default for that. Well, well we're going to put it around six because uh, obviously with all these values, you can tweak them to your heart's content what you want it to look like. But for this, I'll just use this value. And just like the last video, we want to offset these cells. So we're going to output the UV from the tiling and offset, which I used in the last video to show you how we can move a texture around the object. Now, in this one, we're not moving a texture as such. We, well, this is kind of a texture, but it's it's different. Um, rather than having an input, an imported texture, this is a kind of mathematical texture as such. Uh, but it's the same with all the black, white, and gray bits. But anyway, uh, we also want to pass in, like last time, the offset, the X and Y. And since it's taking in a vector 2, and we're going to be inputting two vector 1s, that means we need a combine node, which we had last time. So we output the uh, vector 2 to the offset. And then we'll out, uh, we need to input the RNG value for the x and y. So first of all, we want to get one of the parts is the actual animation for the whole thing moving, like the speed of it. So time and multiply and this lets us pass in time output it to here and we can also take in a value which will be um, like I called it animation speed and we'll set this to minus 0.5 the reason we do it negative is because as you see the it's kind of moving down whereas we want the flames to go up so we want it to be inverted and this lets you actually tweak the speed at which it goes up. So if I put that to like minus 0.1, it would be still going up, but it'd be slow. I like 0.4, minus 0.4. Just make sure it's negative, otherwise you, it'll look silly. Um, and then now we need the R value, which is a lot more complicated up here. So this is what's going to give us the kind of shape of the moving up. At the moment, it's just a straight moving up, but we need it to be offset to the side a bit. Otherwise, the flames will go directly upwards and it won't look great. So what do we need now? we need a lerp and if you know maths or a bit of coding you might have used lerp before uh, lerp is, takes a minimum a maximum and a time and the time you could kind of think of it as a percentage of the way between the two values so for example if the input a is zero and this is one and we want to go to five, 50 percent which would be 0.5 that means we're halfway between these two values which is gray 
between uh, white, black and white. Whereas if I put uh, it between 0 and 2, and this is 0 0.5, it's halfway between 0 and 2, which is 1, so it's completely white, uh, and so on. And this is what this is what the values mean. So put this back to here. I mean, we're going to be changing all these values anyway. So we need the animation kind of the, the shape to be animated itself. So as always, time is the way you do animation, really. Um, and we need the sign of time. But the way he does it is he uses time into a multiply into a sign into a multiply. This isn't necessary, but it does help in some cases because it gives you more flexibility. For example, in the last video, I used a divide straight out of the time so I could uh, bring it down to a sensible value. And that's what this does, really. It's not it's not necessary. It just helps. So if I do multiply, bring that out of here, and I set this to a low value. Because if you notice, in practically every animation you make, the value that comes out of time is always too fast for most animations, unless you do want it to be really fast. Having this here kind of just brings it down to a reasonable value before we then sign the value. Just like sign on your calculator. And then we want to multiply that again. And so now we're multiplying the output. And we'll, we'll take in a vector one for a sign multiplier. And I use the value of a 3.5. So that all work nicely. Oops. And now if we change this value, it will then change the uh, curvature of the actual shape. This is what's going to change how, whether the um, whether the flames are going to go straight up or bend to the side or bend to the side a lot, and you can sh you can tweak that just to make it perfect for you. Anyway, now we've got this value that's going to be moving forwards and backwards slowly, and th this is what changes how far to the right's bent, how far to the left, and it will alternate with time because every so often this will change, as you see right now it's changed, and so on. And then now we want to get an add. And the reason we're getting an add is so that we can output this. I'll output to B to make it look nicer. We want this to be into the A of loop. And then we need something in B and something in D. And B, so we've already got the minimum value and now we need the maximum value. And the, reason, the way we can do that is we can get the UV. Now a UV is the, the thing on top of the mesh. So a mesh is a shape and the UV is what goes around the shape to give it its look. And this has a RGBA value, the vector 4 output, and we can split that so that we can now access the RGB and A value separately rather than just as a 4. We can get all the separate ones. Now, for the lerp, we want to output the R to the, max yeah, to the maximum. Uh, and then now for the um, oh wait, yeah, I've already I've done that right. Sorry, um, but we also want to add that to the to the add. Now, what that means is, as you see here, when I go when I change time, we go between these two values now. But it's actually moving on its own, as you see, because it's this is moving. Now I'm just gonna set this back to zero. This still isn't gonna do much. If you see at the moment, all it's doing is it's making it as as it's moving up. It's also moving to the left. And then after a while, when this changes, it's then going to start moving to the right. So now it's already reached the peak of its left. So it's going to slowly start coming back to the right now. As you see, it's not spinning left as much. Now it's going quite directly up. Now it's kind of going to the right a bit. It's going to try a bit more. Now it's going to the right really fast. So that's, that's alternating between it. And now the one other thing we need is to get the actual shape. So we want to get a shape of a kind of curve. So it kind of goes up. It like flickers up. Now because this is all math space, one really good way to get this curve we want is by using a power function here. And the way this will work is, if you imagine if you have your uh, your graph here and you've got your values. So at zero, you're at zero if it's an x squared. At one, you're at one. At two, you're at four. This is just guessing. At three, you're at nine, all the way up here. So as you go across, you will be increasing, the gradient is increasing, okay, that's, that's a bad way of drawing on here, but your gradient will be increasing at x squared rate. So, as you see in a second, it'll give us a nice curve on here. Now, I also want to increase this a bit. He did 2.8, so I'll do 2.8, see how it looks. Um, so now you'll see when it alternates. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's a bit dry. You'll see it, the transition is actually curved 
if I could pause that, you would see if you followed it along, it would be increasing at the rate of an x squared graph. Oh, sorry, an x to the 2.8 graph, to be precise. Um, but that's what gives us this nice kind of curved bending kind of shape, which for a flame does look pretty good. And the way he's made it is that like after every so often, it then switches to go the other side. But it, it's because it's a lerp, it smoothly transitions. It doesn't just switch from one side to the other. It smoothly goes between them, which is nice. And it gives it a really cool effect. Now, this is getting close to the final effect. Obviously, it doesn't look like it is because it's just these weird cells, but we're very close to actually getting the final effect. So now what do we want to do is we want to go to our Averoni effect, and we don't want to output it straight to the albedo. We want to do some stuff with it first. We want to multiply it. Multiply is one of the most used things in this. So we'll get the output. But what do we want to multiply this by? At the moment, we've just doubled it, which is the default value in here. We don't want that. Uh, we want to get the UV again, and we could just bring the nodes down from up at the top left, but we if we make it here, it's a lot neater. Uh, and we want to split it. Oops, sorry, not sphere. I just want to split so that we can then access the RGBA separately. And then we want to invert it because if we didn't invert it, well, you'll see, actually I'll just leave out the invert for now, and you'll see why we do it. So power, put the G. Not we want the G value. Uh, now if I put that down. You'll see why we invert it. Um, basically, as you know, black is one. Uh, sorry, black is zero. White is one, and we we see the stuff that's white, and we don't see the stuff that's black. So at the moment, the black is at the bottom, the white's at the top. So we're going to see the top of the flames and not the bottom, where it's actually the other way around. We want the top of the mesh where there is no flames to not be rendered, and the bottom to be rendered. So to invert this so that black line at the bottom is actually at the top and it's reversed. We will take this, and we'll do one minus, and then we'll output it. And then now we get the opposite effect, which is exactly what we want for this. So one minus inverts vector ones. It's very useful. Anyway, now over here, we're kind of getting there, but this isn't the end effect we want. We also want to add this effect over it. Whoops. Now, as you see, we've got a lot of white at the bottom, and it's getting less and less at the top, and it goes to black. That means that on our flames, it'll be very visible, and the higher we go up, the more transparent it's going to get. But we don't really want it to be a gradient. We just want it to be um, completely like transparent or not transparent at all. And a good way is step, because step either lets something through or it doesn't. So if we output this to a step, now we get the kind of effect, but it's only um, there or, or it isn't. So if I put this onto albedo, for example, it's not done yet. You get in there with the effect, but it's not right just yet. It's it's almost there. Now we want to change some values. So this edge value, you want to reduce it a bit. So he uses 0 0.6. And then we get another step. And we do like 0.7. And we input this. Now the difference between these is if you see, as you increase the x value, there's less of the actual thing getting rendered on the thing. So as this is 0.7 and that's 0 0.6, there's more of this white than there is this white. But it's the same texture, just kind of moved up. So, this is how we get the um, this is how we get the borderline effect. It's a different for the other shaders. I've used the subtract feature, but subtract this is too complicated on this to use subtract. Using the steps like this really helps. So now, if we get multiply here, and we get multiply here, now just for the sake of making it look better, I'll put that into the B. And now we need to take in two colors, which obviously you don't have to. You can just set the colors. But I'll take a uh, main color as yellow, and then like uh, edge color as an orange. So now, if I uh, get the edge color up here, so what that's going to do is it's going to take the background orange and then we're going to get the yellow in here and we want to add them together and if we if you add something it's kind of like overlapping them so this um orange we're going to just layer on top of the yellow and because it's less yellow than there is orange as you see we get the orange outline border effect which is very helpful and this is actually our albedo so now it's kind of getting there look it's almost right but the problem is we've got this black at the top which is the part of the texture that we don't want to render anymore and we've made it transparent so we can actually alter that but if i just reduce the alpha the problem is it's going to just get rid of the whole thing 
We want the alpha to be changed just for the bits which should be black and white. So if we use this step, which we're not going to, on the alpha, it's going to get rid of the orange bit as well because it's going to get every bit above all this black is going to get not rendered, but some of this white is in this black. So if we actually output this instead, then we get the orange, but we don't get the black at the top. And actually now it is done. Now, if I save the shader and go back into the view, the game view, it's done. Now, all we really have to do is click on the sphere and go into the material and just tweak the value. So, you know, this might be right for your, for how you want it. Um, as you see, if you increase the sign multiplier, it curves it a lot more, so it goes to the side more. It's more exponential because this is the value that gets um, that determines the curvature of it. So if I set this to zero, it would go straight up one, slightly side two, three, and the more you increase it, the more to the side it goes. And then the animation speed is literally just how fast it animates. So if I set this to zero, it's like uh, very slow. One. You kind of want it between that, but. Um, as you see now, if I set it to a positive value, so 0.5, the flames are actually moving downwards, but y you want it to move up, so minus 0.5, so it actually goes up. Uh, set it to 0.9. But yeah, anyway, I'm not going to sit here and tweak with values, that's what you can do. But anyway, yeah, so thanks to Andy BC or whatever his name is, sorry, if I got that wrong then, uh, for letting me do a tutorial on the shader. I really like how it looks, and I hope you guys do too. This can be applied to sprites as well. Just I'm, I'm not going to bother setting up a sprite thing now, but I'm sure you guys can figure out how to do it. Just making sure that, well, for example, if I click quad on here, which isn't a sprite, but it's 2D, you see how it looks. That's how the effect would be. And you can tweak the values um, for your liking. But yeah, so here it is. Obviously, I can't see everything on the screen at once. So you can't read all the values on it, but that's what it looks like uh, in here. Put it back to sphere. Anyway, yeah, so uh, if you want to see more shader tutorials, obviously subscribe, like for more, drop down in the comments what you want to see shaders of. I've already got a, an idea for the next tutorial. Someone wants to see kind of water shaders. You're quite limited because you can't change vertices in shader graph, but well, you will be able to in the future and I'll make a video on that. But until then, we'll, we can do a simple albedo and normal tile offset. I'll think about how what else I can do to make it look better, but I'll uh, definitely do that video tomorrow. Um, but yeah, any other suggestions I'd gladly take. Um, subscribing and liking would help a lot. I'm nearly at 200, and I mean, just that final push would be lovely. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching, and goodbye.